Hi everyone, this is Joanna and Matthew Hoffman with Living Vehicle. Uh, today we're going to be continuing our video series with a digital walkthrough of our interior of our 2020 Living Vehicle. And um, here's Matt who's going to kind of get us started on a um, little bit of the design and we'll go into all the features and options that you guys have been asking about. Um, so let's get started. Awesome. Thanks, Joanna. And so what you see right in front of us, uh, we're doing this digital tour. I'm going to walk us through kind of the interior of the space, the floor plan, all the aspects of living vehicles so you can start to understand all the details behind the functional design that we've created here. Uh, what I want to start with is just this beautiful image of the exterior, the kind of the curbside entry side of the living vehicle. And um, I want to kind of point out before we even begin that this is an entirely new design. This is you know, built from the ground up. Uh, what you see here is the, the exterior is completely new, meaning we've designed every single part. This is not an existing uh, kind of chassis and frame and shell that we have. And you know, the only way that we can really design a, an extremely positive um, you know, floor plan and experience is by starting at the very beginning, you know, starting with a very blank piece of paper. And, uh, you know, then we're able to relate the interior to the exterior and take advantage of all these beautiful architectural moves that make the entire experience flow very well together. Uh, so, you know, without further ado, I'm going to start by uh, bringing us into the floor plan and we can take a look at the overall space layout, you know, really why we designed what you see here and, you know, the, the intention uh, and the basis for all these design decisions that we made here. So at first glance, you know, if you're familiar with our previous models, this might not look very different to you. Um, and it isn't. Um, you know, in general, the layout is pretty similar in terms of um, you know, where we've located the bedroom, you know, bathroom, lounge, things like that. Um, but there are so many differences um, you know, that we're going to go into detail. Um, so. And really what, what Joanna is first talking about is that you don't see a lot changed by virtue of kind of first impression. But our focus on design is constant improvement. You know, we're not going back to the drawing board and approaching an entire new design. We're taking what was well conceived and we are improving on that. And then we're taking that which needs focus, attention, and then we're, you know, we're focusing on the areas that need change and evolution instead of attacking the entire product. And that's exactly right. And if you've seen our previous intro video, um, you know, we only do one model and every year we basically work on refining that. Um, and this is exactly what, um, you know, 2020 is a complete redesign um, of our you know, previous models, uh, complete refinement. And, you know, there's just so many little details throughout. And um, that's what we'll be talking about in this video today. Awesome. So let's start uh, with kind of the overall layout of space. You know, if we take a, a step back and look at why it was designed this way, um, you know, uh, uh, this is designed first and foremost for, um, you know, full-time use or extended use. Now, uh, when we approach that, we look at it and say, okay, it has to function very well in a living environment. So, you know, hence a living vehicle, it's got to function as two things. You know, one, it's got to travel. Two, it has to support, you know, the realities of living in a space full-time. So what we realize is that a very functional um, kind of organization of space is having a bedroom and a living space to one major side of the unit. Um, by locating the bathroom um, in the middle with a hallway down to one side, we're able to make a very efficient kind of space planning and use for you know, folks accessing the bathroom, whether you're staying in the, the master bedroom to the front, uh, folks in the, you know, they're staying as guests in the back area, the adaptable sleeping spaces uh, in the dining area, and then up above with the Euroloft, that can all access the bathroom. Um, this major kind of great room area in the back, which is combined with this kitchen, living, dining, uh, sleeping, media area, and then extension onto the patio, and that really embraces, you know, the, the core of um, kind of the multi-space design where you have a lot of functions in one space capturing and you know, taking from adjacent spaces. So, you know, by locating a lot of elements in one larger space, you know, thoughtfully designed and broken out, you know, we have a real efficient circulation plan. And not only is, you know, this layout designed to maximize functionality and livability, but, you know, it's also very intentionally designed from an engineering standpoint um, for, 
you know, weight distribution? Sure. You know, the weight, uh, we try and center all of the, the weight low in the basement uh, to the full extent possible. All of our heavy you know, utilities and infrastructure is located down below. Uh, most all of our systems, uh, HVAC, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff, you know, the heavy things like plumbing tanks and um, you know, our electrical uh, system, the powerhouse of the living vehicle is also located low and centered above the wheels. Uh, which makes for a very well performing and traveling experience. Um, you know, we've got, you know, what, 30 of these things on the road now yep. um, in previous versions. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got firsthand experience traveling ours, uh, towing for, what, about 50,000 miles. We've uh, taken that baby all over back the and forth place. <laughs> across country. So, um, you know, it's got to do those two things, you know, travel and live. Um, so, you know, one of the major differences now we'll get into uh, of this floor plan is that we increase the overall length of the LV by one foot, uh, 12 inches. Now, um, this was uh, kind of designed with this recognizing that there were some tight bits in the previous model, um, specifically the bedroom and living area. Uh, the bathroom's always been very generous and we've made some amazing changes to the bathroom that we'll go into, but you'll notice that there's a bit more circulation space to either side of the bed. Um, there's also some more space in the living area. Um, we've increased the efficiency of the walls between the bathroom and the bedroom and the bathroom in the living space. We gained about another foot, um, if, believe it or not. So we've uh, effectively increased the bedroom size by about 12 inches. And then we've also increased the, um, the living area, uh, the combined great, great room space by uh, about, about 12 inches as well. Uh, so you'll start to see a lot more generous kind of flow and you know a little bit more elbow room inside the floor plan. So one of the major um, changes uh, that you'll see um, in this unit is we've, we've added some more storage, um, whereas you know, in the previous version um, we did have a great amount of storage, uh, but now we've, we had a, a pass-through compartment in the back underneath the media lounge. We've also got some uh, pass-through to the front. So we've, we've really recognized the increasing need for storage in and this And you design. really can't have enough storage when you know, you're using this for full-time use um, as it's designed, you know, really getting out there and not having to limit what you bring with you. Right, and that's one of the you know, kind of efficiencies that we only get to recognize by you know, experiencing and living in the product for a long period of time over time. Uh, is that we start to understand um, those opportunities for increasing you know, storage capacity. Now, so this was just one of the general design moves that we took advantage of and really focused on in this product, is that the increased need for storage, uh, you can never have too much. Uh, and then we got to find how we can m manipulate and move things around uh, in slight variations to where we can uh, accomplish some more storage capacity. Um, so another uh, major um, kind of design theme, uh, or at least guiding principle of this, this model, the 2020, is that we recognize the difference uh, in the four sides of what you see here. So um, there's some terminology that I'll go over before we get going, is um, what you see some steps uh, coming up to the entry door on the, what's kind of the lower side, that's, that's the, the curb side of the unit. Uh, now, that, that mainly refers to if you were to, you know, in the U.S., you're driving on the right side of the road, you pull Hopefully. up. Hopefully. Oh, well, <laughs> ideally. Uh, you pull up to the side of the road, um, you know, if you're you know, in a parking spot, as if you were to pa parallel park. And when you're in that parked environment on the side of a road, um, that side of the, of the vehicle would be the curb side. And so if you, you know, think about the other side of the, of, of the unit, can anyone guess what that is? Street side. Bingo. All right, so we've got the curb side and street side thus far. Um, and then we'll just call it the front and the back. So uh, fronts to the right with the kind of the, what you see is the A-frame and the hitch, and then the back of the unit is uh, the opposite side of that. So we have four very different sides, and we'll go into this more so uh, in the details of the, uh, of the video as we explain the different spaces. But... Each side is fundamentally very different, you know, because this is not a permanent fixture. Uh, this is a unit that's located in wherever you take it. Uh, we have to recognize that the sides of the unit are not defined by the site or context that we build it in because we have to make this adaptable for many different use cases in many different environments while traveling. Right, it's not like a house where you understand, you know, where all your views are, where your lights coming in, where your neighbors are. Exactly. And then you position your house and design it, you know, to kind of work within the constraints of that 
uh, permanent environment. Exactly. And so not only do we have, you know, kind of this continuous adaptability and variability, uh, depending on where you locate your unit, um, but, you know, there are some constants. Um, you know, fundamentally, the unit's always going to be traveling down the road, uh, going forward behind a vehicle. Again, hopefully. You know, <laughs> hence, we have, you know, a, a, a primary defining characteristic of the front. Um, the back tends to embrace, um, you know, viewscape. You know, when you back your unit in, you know, you tend to have views going out the back. So, you know, this, this also relates to the layout of the floor plan, where each space where we locate inside the unit takes advantage of these different fundamental differences. Um, you know, for example, the patio side, uh, the curb side of the unit, it's very open. Uh, that tends to be, you know, not only is that where the entrance occurs, uh, this is the public side. This is the side that you embrace as your own. This is the side that becomes your private courtyard. Um, and this is kind of specifically if you're talking about staying at a campground, for instance. Not necessarily. Campgrounds become even more um, evident because you, know, you tend to be packed in like sausages sometimes and you're very close to your neighbor. However, wherever you locate the unit, you're always going to be entering and exiting and enjoying that patio space on the curbside of your unit. Now, if you think about the street side, like in your example, Joanna, if, if you're you know, bringing that into a, a camp, campground environment, a national park, something like that, your neighbor is always going to be closer to your street side than your curbside. You know, that's also the service side of your unit. So you, you have got all, all your, your hoses, got your hoses your utilities, plugs, you know, yeah, anything, anything that you do need to connect to. Um, is on that side. So you know, all the that, things you don't want to be looking at. Exactly. <laughs> so not only do you not want to look at that stuff, you also don't want to look at your neighbor. So if you're in a tight you know, environment, so you know, we tend to locate windows in a very different way um, on the street side than we do the curb side, uh, just as we do the, the front and the rear. So you know, there's no one defining characteristic of all these different sides. Um, the point of this intro is that every side is different. And there's a reason that we design each side uh, very differently in that way. Um, so, you know, there's another, um, you know, thing that naturally segues from the, you know, the different aspects of the sides of the unit is view corridors. You know, that's also very, you know, different from one to the next. You know, on the, on the curb side versus, you know, the back, we have primary views, front very limited on views, you know, in part that's the side traveling down the road. Street side, we try and do smaller windows, more linear in nature. Uh, which are, you know, tend to be higher up, um, you know, privacy for the bathroom, same thing with the, um, the, the bedroom. Um, so we really want to focus on minimizing windows on that side and uh, opening up windows on, you know, the, the curb side of the unit. And in general, you know, maximizing the natural light that's coming in. Exactly. Even if you aren't looking out that window, it's still bringing in that light. Um, and we'll talk about this kind of more as we move around through the various parts of the unit, but we did increase kind of the overall amount and size of windows. Right Absolutely. The and there's one more elevation or one more side of the unit that we're not talking about yet, which is you know, probably the most important part, not just from a functional reality, but also we open this up from a viewscape as well, is the top of the unit. Uh, we have some very strategically placed skylights uh, opening up uh, you know, the, the natural light coming in and flooding the unit with light. Uh, we're extreme uh, fans of embracing a, uh, a high light quality in your living space. Um, and so that top of the unit, not just with fenestration and windows, you know, light coming in, but you get to see out, you get to look at the stars, you know, there's some real beautiful kind of, you know, interactions there. Um, and the last thing is, you know, we look at, you know, this other major aspect you see here that's not quite the interior, but it's next to the entry stairs is this patio. You know, this is one of the signature features of the living vehicle, and we'll go into more detail of this uh, as we go through the interior. Um, but that is the, uh, the start to our, uh, our intro, and we're gonna take a dive now into the interior of the space. So we're gonna do a 3D walkthrough, um, and we'll kind of give you a live view as we walk through the space and uh, you know, explain everything that we see. And in case you haven't realized, this will be a long video, so go ahead, grab some snacks and beverages and uh, meet us back here. All right. Thanks, Joanna. All right. So moving right along, um, we're starting off here in our living room area, and we're going to talk about um, everything we see here in this room and a little bit more about the patio and deck. Sure. So what you see, we're now inside the unit. Um, this is a, a great opportunity for you guys to see the in interior. Uh, we're going to move around here. You can see I can release this and start to have complete control. 
of where we go. Um, this is something everybody can see online, by the way. So we have this on our website. Uh, just go on to the 2020 page, and you're welcome to navigate just as I am here um, on on the web at your own time. So you know, take a without look without our narration, without our narration, <laughs> yeah. without all this constant talking at you. So. Um, let's start with uh, the patio, just like Joanna mentioned. This is one of our primary features. It's a fold-down deck that lowers with a garage door style cable assist. This is new for this model. Previously, we had some springs down below and it was a, you know, really a little bit more um, cumbersome, you know, and we really wanted to make that uh, very easy to, to use, you know, the, uh, the action of lowering and raising. So what you'll see here, um, these cables, uh, there's actually two cables on each side uh, that will be you know, utilized. One holds the, the deck in place. Uh, there's nothing required to support the deck. And then there's another set of cables that will just come right up here and go on the outside um, right up into a garage door mechanism. And that's going to lift the deck up effortlessly so you don't have to you know, push or raise you know, any of that. Uh, so we really increase the you know, sophistication of that design. Um, one thing you'll notice here uh, with this patio is that it's located on the curb side of the unit. Uh, this is the side that we kind of embrace and, and allows for a variety of use in you know, many different environments. Uh, we've never been in a site or a spot that we weren't able to use this deck by lowering it. Uh, it only protrudes out about seven feet, a little less than seven feet from the from the side of the unit itself, and that's always the side that you have a little bit more space. You have your picnic tables, fire pits, things like that. Right. And so you can get a great, a great understanding here of what this does for the inside of the space is it really does open up the viewscape and kind of blur this distinction from inside to outside. You know, you can see right now we've got the island located out on the, um, on the patio. This is, you know, one of the awesome features of this design. The island usually lives right down here in the center. Um, this is a portable, movable island. Um, we bring it outside to start doing some cooking out there. Um, use it in a way that you know is an extension of the functional interior of this space. Yeah, and the patio really does extend that living space um, and allow you to connect with the outdoors without actually having to leave the comfort of your unit. Um, you know, it's great for entertaining outside. Well, you can put that island out there, um, do some grilling. You know, create a little bar area. Um, you know, great for pets to be outside, you know, great for your kids. I do yoga out there all the time. Um, and as you can see, there is a railing that comes with that. And, you know, you can customize that a little bit more if you need a completely self-contained uh, deck where, you know, you don't have pets or kids, you know, jumping off. Yep. We do have some pet options uh, where you can, you know, enclose these, these rails and you can have just a full, you know, enclosed railing space all the way around. Uh, you'll notice one thing that um, we, we don't show here, but we do have included, is that on the vertical uh, posts of the railing, by the way, the railing automatically folds, it's not automatic, but it folds down. On uh, the previous model, we had kind of a kit of parts that you had to pull apart. And, you know, this one, we embraced kind of the storage, but also the ease of use of the railing where, you know, that railing feature now folds down and stores against the deck. And it really is a safety feature. You know, for us, we don't have kids and you know our dog uh, pretty much stays on there but that is something that's just a nice feature for you um, mm -hmm. to have a little bit more privacy as well yeah um, so for the shading on the outside uh, we do have some collars that are installed on the railing posts themselves and you can just slide in a typical you know whatever your your, your fancy is for a, an umbrella so you have these you know affordable umbrellas that if they get damaged in the in the wind you know it's very easy to replace uh, it provides a lot of great shade, you know, not just for the side of the unit, but also the deck area in general. Um, and they're all very lightweight and, you know, it's, 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 it's something that makes it very, very nice and enjoyable. It adds a little bit more residential feel instead of feeling like you're in, you know, a, a trailer, frankly, you know. And this deck is extremely robust. Um, it's rated for 1,500 pounds, so, you know, that's a couple of good-sized adults on there that you can you know, be out there enjoying that space. Right. Uh, we do have some great options where uh, you can you know, increase the usability of the deck. We have an optional barbecue aluminum table as part of the chef's kitchen package. Um, and you know, if you look down here uh, at the flooring surface, uh, this is an indoor-outdoor. This is new. It's a, it's a very nice, uh, enjoyable, uh, light, light-colored um, woven fabric material. It's really a rug um, that you know, allows you to kind of go outside and feel you know, very nice on a barefoot. You know, it's not going to get too hot if it's out, outdoors. Um, you can actually un unclip the thing and clean it uh, on the top and the bottom, so it's very user-friendly. Um, so, 
you know, this is one of the primary features of the LV. You know, you definitely notice it every time you come and look at one. Um, it's probably the most, you know, kind of requested, you know, feature that kind of sets us apart. So that's why we wanted to lead with that. Um, you know, bringing us now inside to the space a little bit more, we're going to rotate around to the other side. Uh, this is our kitchen. Um, and we're going to talk about the functional layout of the kitchen, why we designed it the way we did. Um, Joanna, you know, holds a, a big part in this design. Uh, Joanna has a history of, you know, cooking and chef work and, uh, you know, can go into kind of the functional design of the space and why we did what we did. Yeah, I think what's interesting is a lot of time, uh, we've gotten this question a lot, how is cooking in, you know, an RV different than cooking at home? And people that have been living this lifestyle for a while will tell you it's not. Um, you, know, you don't need a lot of room. You just need things to be, um, you know, functional. And you need all those uh, kind of appliances that you would typically use at home. So we've really put so much time into maximizing the efficiency of this space. You know, building in, of course, plenty of storage in the pantry. Um, you know, things for pots and pans. Um, you know, lots of cabinetry. Uh, cabinets, uh, things like that. Yeah, so you've seen, you know, what we're looking at right now is all the cabinetry that Joanna's mentioning. And I'll go into a little bit about what each cabinet's for. Um, this is a new feature to this model, is that you see this kind of vertical section of cabinets to the right. Uh, we recognize that, you know, the pantry needed to grow slightly, and then also the trash solution, you know, has evolved. So right now we've got a pantry up above. The pantry is wider than the previous version, uh, about twice as wide. Um, and then we also have, um, you know, a trash and recycling area down here to the right. Uh, so that's, you know, both of those are served. You just open up this integrated hardware with the door uh, and the pantry slides directly out and same thing with the trash compartment. Uh, so that's very easy. Lots of storage there. Uh, right here we have um, this, this stove top um, and directly underneath we have several large storage compartments. Uh, this stove can be um, swapped out for a oven stove combo. Uh, and that's part of the chef's kitchen upgrade, which would replace this section right here with a high-end marine style oven. Um, underneath, this is a great uh, pull-out drawer uh, for pots and pans. And then you have these great five, actually four to five, depending on you know, how it's configured, doors, uh, drawers here that pull out and they're all you know, complete storage. One unique thing about the LV is that all the storage you see here, this is true storage. We don't have um, the issue with locating um, you know, stuff like water heaters or furnaces or other equipment in the cabinetry. Um, you know, we embrace this early on by design, by designing our own shell um, with the conditioned basement. And we're able to locate all of that infrastructure down below, saving valuable cabinetry space. Yeah, there's nothing more disappointing than opening up a cabinet or drawer uh, just to find that you can't actually put anything in it. Exactly, you know, and finding just a little panel there and there's nothing there for you to, you know, to store. So, um, you know, shown in this, in this uh, configuration, we do have the chef's, you know, chef's uh, kitchen option here. Uh, this is just the dishwasher shown. Uh, and uh, this is a six setting dishwasher. It's great, it runs off grid. It uses, you know, frankly, less uh, water than, uh, you would had you you know done all the dishes by hand. That's a great news. <laughs> saving water, <laughs> saving water and doing less dishes. Great excuse to not have to do dishes. Uh, we do have a very high end stainless steel uh, square sink, along with what is new for the 2020 model are these beautiful matte black high end all metal brass fixtures. Uh, so right now, you know, what's shown is the um, uh, kind of the primary pull out uh, faucet. You have. To the right here, this is a soap dispenser, and then you also have a water filter, um, and that's uh, standard on all units. And I think the you know fixtures that you just pointed out are a great example of you know the kind of level of design and refinement that has gone into this whole unit. You know, we've really touched every single detail and not said, okay, let's choose you know the cheapest faucet. Right. Um, you know, we've really given this a holistic approach and you know, tie together all the details, all the materials to really create you know, that beautiful feeling that you are in a you know, luxury apartment as opposed to a you know, dark kind of travel trailer. And one of the, you know, to, to kind of continue on what Joanna's saying here is that one of the features of a luxury apartment is very functional kitchen. You know, kitchens tend to be grand and you know, have a very thoughtful layout. Um, and 
you know, part of that is this concept of the triangle of circulation and kitchen design, uh, where you look at um, the three major fixtures, which is stove, oven, and sink, and refrigerator. And those, you know, need to be located in a triangle. Um, and you have to look at each of those legs of the triangle and say, how do we circulate from one to the next? Um, we've designed the kitchen in a way that um, allows for multiple people to be cooking or using it at the same time with the removable island, uh, which can be placed right down here in the center. Um, we do have the refrigerator to the right here. Uh, this is a major evolution of design. Uh, this fridge, you know, we've in intentionally designed it to be white. Uh, previously it was stainless, but all the design features of this unit are you know, intended to blend in or stand out depending on what it is. You know, right now this is blending in with this beautiful white wall um, and this fridge is huge. Yeah, this, uh, this fridge is pretty exciting. As you can see, we can barely fit the whole thing in the frame of what we're looking at. Um, you know, we've increased the size of our fridge. This is 13.5 you know, cubic feet and it is a solar refrigerator. And to put that into perspective, uh, the 2019, 2018 models had a seven foot cubic refrigerator freezer. This one is all solar powered by the sun, batteries, you know, it's connected directly to the battery system. And it is, you know, about 50, you know, 100% bigger. You know, the other one was half, half this size. So, you know, this is, this is substantial. Yeah, just another example of how we're designing for, you know, full-time use. Um, you know, how your needs are different if you're using something full-time versus just for the weekends. Right. And also making, you know, every decision that allows us to get closer and closer to our net zero, you know, 100% um, electrical. And so let's talk about some of the fixtures and features that you don't see, um, you know, starting with this generous overhead cabinetry. Uh, this is designed for putting all of, you know, a lot of your, um, your plates, your cutlery, not, not your cut cutlery, just your kitchen appliances. Um, we do use this for overhead storage for food sometimes, um, for glassware, stuff of that nature. Uh, this model extends the overheads all the way down to this wall here. On the previous version, this section did not exist, so we've doubled the overhead cabinetry space. Um, one of the things you don't see right now is a microwave. That is located in a pullout inside the cabinetry. Um, we also have some great um, you know, options available through the chef's kitchen. Uh, some of the stuff that you know, we didn't mention yet, uh, there is a wine chiller, uh, which is available as part of the chef's kitchen. Um, you heard that right, and a that's wine chiller. And <laughs> specifically designed for mobile use. So you know, when you're traveling and you like wine, you, know, you gotta protect those bottles, not just keep them at the right temperature, but also make sure they don't break while traveling. So this is a, a, a specific mobile designed wine chiller that holds six bottles. Um, then the other thing that we have uh, as part of the Chef's Kitchen package is a integrated Insta hot and cold water filter system. So it replaces this little device right here. Uh, this is cold filtered water. Um, hot filtered water is amazing. It makes the breakfast experience just so easy. You know, you just go over there, you take some coffee, you fill up your French press, you make a, a glass of tea. You know, it's, it just makes that morning experience. As few steps as possible <laughs> to get you started in the morning. Get coffee into my bloodstream quick. Um, you know, the last thing you see about the kitchen is this intentional placement of this window. Uh, we got a lot of requests for opening up this space more with windows. This is a new window to the left. We do have a vented window here to the right directly behind the stove. Uh, this really embraces some of these kind of vista views as you're sitting in this environment. Um, you know, and it really opens up light quality for cooking as well. So, you know, while you're utilizing this space, it makes it very functional. So here's a great kind of overview look at the kitchen in its entirety. Um, you see here, we've got the kitchen island mounted there in the middle. Um, that's where it would live if you're you know, actually in travel mode. Um, and like we said, it's really easy um, to just kind of unscrew, it bolts into the floor and um, you know, move that out into the patio area. Um, it also opens up your floor space inside as well if you, you know, wanna have some extra room in there and you know, don't need that extra counter space. Um, and there's also um, storage in there as well, which I don't think we've mentioned yet. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of storage in the island. You can you know, take stuff outside with you, you know, and you can see there's a little overhang on the island. You know, this is designed if you do want to put a couple bar stools here and you know, eat, eat at the island, you know, or you can stand here uh, and prep from this side of the island as well while someone's on this side to have more than just one person working in the kitchen. So now we're going to move over to the dining and media area. This is part of this open great room uh, that we have inside the back of the living vehicle. 
And this serves you know, the, you know, a multitude of purposes, frankly. You know, what you see right out of the gate, you know, we're gonna give you an overview. Um, this is kind of the most, the rearmost section of the LV you'll see here on the plan. Uh, we have a, a dining area that seats six. Um, you'll see some very nice walnut chairs here. Those are included. Uh, every LV comes with two of these chairs. Uh, this table um, can be you know, manipulated and removed to con con convert uh, the space. Um, and so, so same thing with this L section of the sofa. You know, this can turn into multiple different types of uses. Uh, so why don't we start with um, some of the conversion opportunities that we see here. You know, what you see is right now in the kind of the dining configuration. Uh, this converts uh, to a, a bed area. This converts to a, uh, a lounge, so you can get rid of the table altogether. Uh, the chairs can fold away and just have an open space. Um, this backmost section, you can extend it out to have this chase lounge um, full length, so you can have multiple people with their feet up in this environment. And if we move over here, you can kind of get a sense of what that looks like. Um, this is the television. Um, so this is a very thin frame TV that is by a uh, very high-end manufacturer. Uh, and we're designed this so that it looks like an art piece, you know, so, um, and it's also a proper viewing angle. So when you're sitting here looking at the, at the television in this media space, you know, you've got this great viewing angle where you don't have to look up or down too far. Uh, and it's just a really enjoyable viewing experience. Um, one of the nice things about this space, it does convert to that bed. Uh, it converts very easily where this section uh, you see right here, this uh, extends out uh, and the cushions, the back cushions, just you move those down and that turns into a queen sized uh, bed. That is an improvement over the previous version where we had a double bed here. This is now a true queen size. It's actually extra, extra long. I think it's about 90 inches long for folks that, uh, you know, need a little bit of extra room when you know laying down in this guest bed area it's also great too if you have you know several young kids um, you know that are able to share a bed with each other and um, you know, that's an option or if you like to spoil your pets and you know, give them a more comfortable place to sleep as well um, so really a lot of different you know uses um, for you know, however you kind of plan on using your unit so now let's talk about uh, the storage that we have here. Um, one of these great kind of aspects of having such a, a, a nice dedicated lounge space is that there is storage throughout. Um, you have this, um, you know, underneath here, there's a pass-through compartment, uh, which is accessed from both the outside, from either side or the inside. Uh, we also have this, uh, this new element here. Um, this is two cabinet doors uh, inside this media storage area. Uh, so this is where all your devices will live so you don't have anything like dvd players or vc not, not that we're gonna have a vcr vcrs <laughs> bringing back the vhs um or you know you've got your apple tv stuff like that you know sitting now inside here if you you know any of our sonos devices the controllers you know all that stuff would live in here this is a vented compartment so you have good air circulation from top to bottom you know i've actually heard quite a few people are still using uh, vhs's specifically for when they're going off grid oh, where you know, people want to disconnect and don't want to have to jump on their computers and play a movie that you know they may have downloaded um, so that's kind of a nice option yeah and that's that's nice to consider where this is very adaptable so if you've got you know whatever kind of media device that you utilize you know you've got a bunch of 110 outlets in here um, you can you know put your put your v VCR VHS you know <laughs> DVD you know any any kind of play system inside here and it can integrate directly into the television. So we put a lot more space into this dedicated media compartment now. Um, one of the things that you don't see inside this, uh, this, I guess this photo, uh, which, you know, is intentional, um, is the Euroloft. Now that's one aspect that, you know, doubles the sleeping capacity of this space. It is an option. And, you know, that drops down directly out of the ceiling, uh, and comes down to, you know, create space for two additional, you know, individual sleeping. So that would expand the sleeping capacity to six. Uh, that comes down with just a push of a button. Uh, these banks of cabinets here uh, would actually be at the bottom and mounted to the bottom side of the Euroloft, and those would come down uh, with the Euroloft uh, as well. Which is great. So you're not losing any storage space. You're not having to sacrifice there um, if you do want that extra sleeping capacity. 
Uh, we do have a couple other options available in this section. Um, you know, we've got some hi-fi audio options where you can put in some uh, additional controllers inside this, uh, this media bay uh, to have some full Sonos surround sound experience. Um, you know, and uh, you know, that really increases you know, the zones and the quality of, not just the quality of audio, but the configura configurability where you, know, you can configure all that with your phone, but say you're in an off-grid environment, you don't want to be looking at your phone. That also adds some little touch screen controllers uh, in each room, in each zone, so you can kind of customize and control that experience. Yeah, so there's a lot of options for kind of customizing this based on how you're using it, and there's more information about those options. And uh, of course, we'll be talking about those more in other videos. Um, now one thing I don't think we mentioned yet are all of the great walnut accents in here. Uh, you know, we've really, again, kind of gone through and refined and you know, chosen higher quality materials um, to kind of warm up the space a little bit, you know, very easy for cleaning, um, very durable, and really just you know, kind of gives you that nice feel. Um, again, kind of blurring the distinction between the indoors and the outdoors. Right, and the functionality of these walnut elements as well. You know, we've got you know, these, these shelving spaces, um, you know, whereas previously there was not any sh uh, storage available in this space. So you know, we're, uh, we love indoor outdoor bringing the outdoors in through materiality and views um, and then creating as much adaptable space in this in this uh, area as possible there's a lot of functions you know in this uh, dining living sleeping you know, space and there's a few other features that don't quite fit into any one room so we're going to just talk about them here is for all you pet lovers out there um, you know we ourselves have a dog um, you know, we know lots of people have dogs and cats and have really been asking for more pet friendly features. Um, and so we have built in, you know, some extra items that um, are new to the 2020 offering. Uh, we've got, you know, right out of the gate, um, you know, the stuff that is, you know, kind of standard and has been there. Um, uh, we'll talk about the flooring. You know, the flooring is an LVL flooring. It's extremely durable. It's very waterproof. You know, we've had in our unit personally, we had I don't know, probably 100,000 people walk through the thing. And, you know, the floor looks great. It looks new. Um, you know, so imagine with your pets, with their claws running around, you know, it's, it's very, very durable intentionally. Um, you know, what you, what you find here is in this, I guess we're going to move over into this section, this little hallway. Um, right underneath here, there's a storage compartment. There's some food area, um, which we've allocated for pets. You know, you can move away this door, close the door to the bathroom. And that reveals, you know, a lot of stuff, but we're only going to, you know, share with you right now. This little area down here is a dedicated space to put food bowls and water bowls for your pets. Yeah, and it's really important, you know, when you are living in such a small space and if you are using it for full-time or extended use, that there really is a dedicated place for everything. Um, you know, you're not kind of cramming things into weird places that you forget about. You know, it's really important for us to kind of stay organized and understand, you know, where certain things go. It really helps kind of maximize really the, I don't know, the pleasure of it all. And now we're looking at more pet friendly features. We've got this deck. Um, one option is having some screens on here to, if you're going to you know, put some cats or dogs out here in kind of this outdoor den area. Um, it is very friendly from, a, you know, you've got some shade from the umbrellas and also the flooring material is very pet friendly. Um, outdoors, this is also designed to be waterproof. We do have an option uh, as part of the, um, the bathroom, uh, the bathroom spa package, which adds an outdoor shower. Uh, that outdoor shower also doubles as a, a pet washing station. And, um, you know, that's something that you kind of want to do outside of the dirt, you know, and do it with a, you know, a hand. Uh, hand shower wand, you know, that makes it for a very nice, enjoyable experience. You can just kind of walk, you know, if I show you this view, what you do is, you, you know, this island's gone and then right around the corner there is where the shower exists and then you just kind of stand at ground level, put your pet up here on the deck, you know, and it's very, it's kind of like a, a professional salon, frankly. Um, and, you know, finally we've got a great option for, you know, taking care of pet hair, shedding, um, also for, you know, just kind of daily cleanup makes it very easy. We've got the optional central vac. Oh, that's part of the good housekeeping package, you know, along with some other, you know, wonderful, um, wonderful, you know, upgrades. So, you know, we, we really believe, you know, living with pets for so long, you know, it's, it's good to, to get the, the hair out. 
you know, and get the dander out. You know, the you know, we've we've used vacuums, small vacs, big vacs, and it, it just takes up more space. But also, you know, the filters, there's limitations. You know, the HEPA filtration really doesn't do what's needed. And as if we, we've experienced, and we end up taking too much, uh, you know, allergy medicine uh, to kind of put up with it. But by taking the dander and hair out and putting it outside of the space, we actually vent it out to the basement and then outside. Uh, that just takes everything and doesn't swirl around indoors. You know, it just gets rid of it. Um, the final what I'd say is the pet friendly feature. We've got a couple of great things here uh, as, as options. You know, first off, the, the fabric uh, is a Sunbrella Outdoor Marine, a very high-end brand. You know, it's used in nautical and marine environments. Um, this is very durable for pets. Um, also, there's an upgrade option to turn this into an ultra leather, uh, which is extremely durable, a little more, a little softer, um, but you know, very, very enjoyable, very, you know, very pet friendly. So if your pets are allowed on the, on the sofa, we thought about that. Uh, the final thing is we've got something that's pretty cool. A little cat litter box gets installed if you want it. Um, underneath this pass-through lounge, and then there's a little cat door that goes right about there. So cats can go in and out into this dedicated area. This is something I learned from my childhood is we had a wood room. We put the cat, cat box in there, um, and it was just so enjoyable not to have the cat litter box in your living space. Uh, but for them to have kind of a, a nice smell proof environment to go and do their thing and you, you can clean that from the outside so you'll just walk around outside the patio to this pass-through area you can pull out and kind of manage you know the cleaning of that that litter box and this is one of those features that we had kind of tested um, with one of our customers that did have cats and you know asked about that option um, so they've been using it for several months now and um, said it's been working great so we decided to make that um, a full offering well that's great uh, so that kind of wraps up this area of uh, of the living vehicle uh, we're going to move on here um, go into the bathroom next so if you're still with us uh, thanks for following along and uh, we're about halfway through and now we're going to go through um, the areas that are in the front of the unit. So you can follow us along through this hallway um, and join us in the bathroom. So you can see the hallway here is uh, kind of the combined circulation space of the entire unit. You know, right underneath us, this is as if you were to just enter the, uh, the LV. Uh, you come into the hallway space and you'll see there's uh, this door to the left um, towards the back of the back of the unit. Uh, that is the space that we just finished talking about. Uh, to the right is your bedroom space, and directly in front of you is the spa bathroom that we've designed. So let's take a, a, a move into this bathroom here, and we can talk about all the, all the spaces you see. Uh, right out of the gate, you know, bathroom design, especially in a small space, the layout becomes extremely important. You know, not just the circulation and making sure that you have adequate space to kind of do all the functional needs of the bathroom, uh, but it's how each space relates to one another because there's a lot of kind of combined use of space. You know, we've got some very creative architectural gestures here, um, but also the quality of space, you know, lighting, how the space feels. It's so important because there's, you know, when you're getting ready for an event or something, it's, it's, it's a space that you really need to feel at peace in. And so we put a lot of time, effort, energy into the design of the bathroom space. And I think the bathroom is often a space that gets overlooked, um, you know, in typical travel trailers. And, you know, for us, this is a space that's really important. You know, you're using it on a daily basis, you know, several times a day. Um, it's really nice to have that kind of spa feeling um, and really be continuous with that design of the overall unit. So right out of the gate, the, the functional kind of floor plan is very similar to the design that we had previously. Um, something you'll notice is the window, uh, first off, got a lot bigger. So right now we've got a 48 inch wide window um, and this, you, know, you can see directly outside, this also goes into the shower space now. Um, the shower is now opened up into the living space and we now uh, kind of delineate the actual shower by utilizing a curtain. Now what you'll see here is underneath the floor, this shower has a, it's a hardwood deck. It extends all the way out underneath the kind of the toilet here. Now that's accomplished um, this kind of extending the shower space out slightly into the bathroom, um, which 
everything you see here, this is a drain. So it's a floor level drain. The water just kind of drips down through those, those deck slats and into a drain that you don't see. Uh, it's very cleanable. You can just lift a section of this out and then pull it out and you'll clean down below. Um, but it's extremely functional because now you don't have this hard line as in our previous model, uh, which kind of limited the, the functional use of this shower. You know, you ever stayed in a hotel and you have that, that, that shower curtain arm, the bar that kind of extends out into the space, making the shower itself bigger. You know, that's kind of what we did here where you see this shower curtain extends out past into the room slightly and takes advantage of this kind of this, this drain which you know, extends all the way out. This is also really nice so that when you do step out of the shower, you don't step onto kind of bathroom floor and get things wet. So this is a, 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 a true 36 by 36 shower now that grew six inches. Um, and you now have this beautiful little wet dry area where you can towel off and drip dry if, uh, if you, you know, don't want to get anything wet. Yeah, it really just maximizes the you know, efficiency, the functionality of the whole experience. Um, if you're washing pets inside, you know, kids, things like that, um, you know, it really does get rid of that, um, you know, potential kind of leak or, um, you know, dripping coming out of, you know, the shower kind of stepping out. Um, this really just kind of gives you a nice continuation of space in that specific area. And if you're looking at the shower itself, you know, there's some kind of realities that we are acutely aware of when it comes to using a shower. You know, you ever been in a hotel and in order to turn on the shower, you have to walk into the shower and then as you're turning on the shower, you get sprayed with cold water. Right in your face. Right in your face. And it always happens. You know, that's something that we're, you know, we mitigate. You know, we do not design to have those small inconveniences and you know, just, it just, it dumbs down the space. So right now it's so easy. You just reach right around here. You know, you're not going to get wet when you turn on the shower. Um, it'll just go straight into this into this drain. Um, and if you'll notice, if we take a look up here, one of the main features of the LV bathroom is this beautiful skylight directly centered above the shower. Um, not only does this create for an amazing bathing experience, uh, you know, we <laughs> you can look up, you can see stars, you can see the sun. You know, it makes you really feel as if you're outdoors. So if we move on uh, from the shower, as we extend out into the bathroom, you'll see that we have a towel bar here. Uh, this is well placed, you know, directly so you can access it right after you use the shower. You don't have to take your towel and then kind of awkwardly put it down on the toilet, you know, as you're kind of waiting to use it right after the shower. Uh, this can be uh, replaced through the spa bathroom package with a, um, a towel, towel warmer, a heated towel warmer that's on a timer. Um, moving right around here a little bit to the right, is a very large, can barely fit it in this screen because we're in a, in a smaller space, is this medicine cabinet. And this is you know, wide open with several shelves uh, to locate a lot of your kind of taller goods and stuff that you use on a regular basis. So it's just right at your eye level and it's very easy to use. Yeah, and this is one of two kind of major storage compartments within the bathroom. You'll see the other one there um, below the sink. You know, in this one, this is your vanity storage. Um, you know, one of the nice features, this storage is true usable storage space. So you don't have any, you know, equipment down there. You just got some shelves um, to allow for larger items like hair dryers, you know, other kind of functional needs, baskets you could put in there. So you can store a lot of stuff down there. And why don't we kind of move on to Joanna to kind of talk about this beautiful LED mirror and the experience of utilizing, you know, the vanity and how, how you'd get ready there. Yeah, so one thing that's really important is, you know, having adequate lighting and, you know, we have throughout the unit, all of our lights are on dimmers, so you can kind of control, you know, the amount of light you need. Um, but in the you know, bathroom mirror, important, you know, especially for the women to have a little bit more light um, so you're getting ready in the morning or, you know, getting ready for bed in the evening. Um, it just gives you you know, some more visibility. And this is, you know, what you see here, this little light strip, uh, this white element all the way around the mirror, that is, a, is an LED light strip with a, you know, very warm quality of light. So you can turn this on and kind of blast it all the light there, you know, to have that, that experience. It also lights up the entire bathroom as well. But it's not, it's not a harsh experience. No, and, not know, at all. Lighting right. is something that really is important to us. Um, you know, Matt's written very, a few strongly worded letters to various establishments uh, making recommendations about <laughs> switching out their, uh, their use of light and yeah. then talking about the Calvin scale. Um, you know, when we talk about 
the detail, you know, the amount of detail that has gone into this whole unit. Uh, you know, these are the types of things we're talking about. We really have not, you know, left anything kind of un untouched. And you can really see that, you know, by living in a space for so long, you know, that our, our minds are constantly on it. So we're, you know, not just thinking about what can we do next. I mean, we're, we're influenced every day by how can we make this better. So let's see, we've got um, any other aspects of the bathroom um, that, you know, we can talk about. We've got our toilet here. You know, this is a, um, this is a um, kind of your standard um, high quality porcelain uh, toilet and it's a foot flush. This is the, the entry level toilet that we have as part of the core configuration. Uh, we do have some awesome options, part of the spa bathroom package where you can put in some toilet uh, configurations. Uh, one is a, um, a high-end electric flush, um, which is also a combined bidet uh, toilet. Uh, that is still a tank-based toilet. Our black water tank is directly underneath this toilet, going straight down. Um, you know, we have a lot of experience with, you know, understanding how black tanks do and don't work very well, and the design that allows them to work the best that they can. Uh, we do have another option, which is a compost toilet uh, designed by an uh, outstanding company that kind of utilizes a combined diversion of um, uh, kind of the, the solids and then the liquids, and then you can kind of split those off into you know, your gray tank, and then you can utilize you know, the, the solids, uh, you know, compost, uh, compostability, and then that also frees up your black tank. So your black tank through that option turns into yet another gray tank. Um, and we're able to kind of utilize that in a very positive way, you know, to kind of push and pull, you know, pre-existing elements and then, you know, push the idea of how long you can stay off grid uh, because, you know, your water usage is one of the major uh, considerations of how long you can stay in an off-grid environment. So what better way to finish up the bathroom segment than talking about toilets? <laughs> um, follow us along and we'll be moving through the rest of the um, LV going into the hallway and talking more about some of the storage and also some of the tech um, that we've got in this unit. Are you still with us? We're almost done. Um, we're here in this hallway again. We're going to talk a little bit more about that storage that we referenced earlier and then also get into some of the tech systems. We're going to talk about mobile connectivity, uh, you know, our energy, and then also heating and cooling. So the reason that we're located in this hallway, in this you know, kind of tight little hallway, is that we have this very special space that's you know, not specifically shown in this image, but it's located right behind this door. So this door you see is the, the doorway to the bathroom. And when it's in the open, so when the bathroom door is open, the, the storage compartment in the hallway is closed. So in order to access this compartment, you just take the door, you close the bathroom door to the bathroom, but you open the storage compartment itself. So behind here, you'll find a whole bunch of shelves. At the bottom, you'll find an open space for shoes or for pet bowls and food. At the top section, probably the top two or three feet, this is where all the technology panels, the systems monitoring, it's right in this section right here, right at head height. It's centralized, so it's very easy to access. And you also got underneath this a lot of storage space for all your stuff that we found. You know, we had wallets and keys and books and stuff that we tend to take with us on a daily basis, you know, that we needed a space, a very convenient, easy space to locate all those items. Same thing with all of our shoes down here below. And what's great is it stays hidden and it helps you stay organized and helps your space stay nice and clean. So the reason we're going to talk about all this tech equipment now and kind of segue into a little deeper dive on some of the technology behind the LV is this is where the physical interaction with all those technology elements happens. You know, one of our you know, general themes about design with uh, this type of space is that we really try to take technology and you know, let it kind of fall off into the distance where it's not shouting at you. We don't have blinking lights everywhere. You know, we don't have constant notifications or you know, a feeling that you can't disconnect because there's so much tech surrounding you. So right out of the gate, you know, kind of at the hub of everything LV from a tech standpoint is this concept of access and internet access or being connected to the cloud. Now, with every LV, we do have a mobile router that is included uh, in the core configuration. It's basically the Wi-Fi hub to the unit. Now, it does have antennas to the outside, so you can bring in connectivity, and that would be located in here where you control that. Now, 
as part of the LV, we believe that Wi-Fi or you know, that, that standard you know, connectivity method is far superior to Bluetooth or other connections. Now, we do have a couple devices on Bluetooth, but we're definitely moving towards the direction of making everything centered around this kind of unique hub for Wi-Fi. It has great range and you, know, you can connect to it from much further distance. You know, that enables you to be able to remotely view your unit and you know, all the systems that are Wi-Fi or cloud enabled. So you can have that visibility on everything. Um, so right out of the gate, you know, I'm gonna you know, share with everyone um, some of the details about this systems monitoring aspect of the tech bay. And uh, I think the, probably the best way is to open up a image here, uh, a layout diagram that I can talk everyone through, uh, kind of our energy, um, energy use and how, how things are connected to the LV. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up this image, give me a sec, and we'll talk more about that. Okay, so here we have a, uh, a diagram which shows kind of the overall energy layout and how we're capturing energy from a variety of power sources. Uh, so right here, we're powered by this amazing automotive grade uh, system. Uh, this is founded on the concept of a higher voltage DC system. This runs at 58 volts. Um, so that requires a higher level of safety standard. Um, and this is an amazing system. I'm excited to kind of do a deep dive on this system in and of itself because there's so much to it. Uh, but some of the big kind of picture items here is that on our core configuration, we have 8.7 kilowatts of usable power capacity. Um, this is being pulled and powered from a variety of sources, but the primary source that's always on, no matter where you are, is our standard 1200 watts of solar mounted up on the roof. Of course, that is expandable through various option packages, but this is a tremendous amount of solar that comes standard. Uh, that solar goes straight through the solar charge controller and is programmed to charge our, uh, our energy system at a higher voltage than 58 volts. Uh, so this allows us kind of a very efficient power setup. Uh, the power system in and of itself is powered by a nickel manganese cobalt lithium battery, which is two times more power than consumer grade lithium. And it's got some pretty impressive stats. Uh, it's five times the life uh, in about a third of the space and an amazing sixth of the weight of kind of what you would see in a standard you know, battery environment for an off-grid application. Um, you know, in with all this technology comes an additional need for safety. Um, this system has seven layers engineered safety built into it and it's designed to last the lifetime of the vehicle. So the lifespan of this system, the battery use case is exemplary. Um, we do have a lot of options that um, you know we can expand various systems here and whether that's backup power like you see here to the right. Um, we have you know another option which is this rapid vehicle charging um, by use of a high voltage op uh, alternator that would be installed into the tow vehicle. Of course we do have shore power as a standard where you can plug in and charge batteries in that environment. Uh, so all of these are built into option packages that we have and they're available in you know, various configurations. And now what you see here is all of this, this is your power source on the top. It comes through to either the inverter or the charge controller to power your, your battery system. Now all of this, whether it's through direct battery power through the DC converter or using your AC-DC inverter to take and power 110 appliances, this allows us to power virtually everything in the living vehicle. And so we, you know, as we're on our path to make this completely net zero for all systems, right now we have created a you know, net zero electrical system to where all of the, um, all the energy from the supply standpoint up here in, in this you know, kind of realm, or whether it's solar, you know, we can come through and then we can create power through. And all of these systems, whether it's the air conditioner, which is an industry you know, first for us, uh, it's an amazing ability to power you know, all day, your air conditioning system. Uh, you also have a solar refrigerator, among all these other things that you see here listed. Uh, so it's a tremendous opportunity to get further, go further off grid. And you know, all of this is located in that, um, that panel right above, the, um, right above the storage in the hallway. Yeah, and then our energy management system really is kind of one of the major developments for 2020. Uh, you know, we've gone with automotive grade electronics and, you know, this is a closed system, uh, you know, meaning it's not something that you're able to tinker around with. Right. You know, it's, it's, 
it is sealed. You, know, you see on these energy packs, you know, it's designed you know, not to be accessed. You know, this is something that is very highly you know, kind of managed from a quality control standpoint. And we don't want anyone you know, messing around with this. You know, this is higher DC voltage and we're aware of that. You know, we take all these precautions and we design this so that we can take advantage of the efficiency of that. And it is a closed loop system. You know, all these are connected together with wiring harnesses. All this is done in a very highly controlled manufacturing shop floor you know, out in um, you know, Michigan where these things are assembled. You know, it's, it's a very high-end product and it's, it's very different than what's you know, kind of traditionally accepted in the industry with you know, consumer grade batteries and inverters and you can kind of assemble the kit of parts yourself and you know, put it all together. So you know, I'm gonna move on from here into you know, another major you know, system which is accessed from that technology bay. Uh, and we're going to move that right now. And this is our heating and cooling system. So you'll see some, you know, some, some components in that tech bay which allow you configurability of this system. But I'll go into more of this in just a sec. All right, so one of the core aspects of the living vehicle is the ability to go in all four seasons. You know, as a full-time you know, space that you're traveling around across the country, not everywhere is always, you know, kind of that ideal, what? 75, 75 and, sunny. and sunny. So, you know, there's a lot of beautiful places, um, you know, in realities that we, you know, have to weather through very hot and very cold climates. So, you know, this is a diagram that I created that helps share some of the, the basic um, design methods that we use to accomplish this. Um, you know, you're probably familiar with the heated basement or the conditioned basement concept, and that's what this lower section here that we've shown in the section. So, you know, backing up a little bit, this is a section of a part of the, the unit just to show some of these primary features that, you know, accomplish the four season capability. So, you know, our, our conditioned basement is kind of the core of all of this, where that space houses all of our electrical equipment, uh, our sensitive electronics, uh, all the plumbing, which needs to be located in a conditioned area so as not to freeze or be too hot. Um, this is effectively the return air plenum, which draws in cool air or conditioned air, which is in the space, and it pushes air through vents into the space. Now, this is just one part of the heating system. You know, we do have other heating elements, uh, depending on the package that you select. We have um, you know, a floor supply uh, of baseboard heaters, which are independently zone controlled. These are selectively you know, positioned based on you know, access to windows where you see this is a cold uh, or a, uh, a cold spot. So we have this warm blanket of air coming up over that cool window. You'll notice that you know, we have all these small kind of radiant lines coming up from the floor. This is the raised floor above the conditioned basement. The floor itself is made out of, you know, one eighth inch solid sheet aluminum. And underneath that are joists. They're also aluminum. Imagine this is kind of like a radiator where it takes the warm air from the basement and radiates this air into the metal and then creating a, a passively warm floor design, which is very pleasant to walk around in and to experience. Uh, you'll see that all of this, um, this space is covered, um, you know, by a, a, a border of insulation. This is rigid two inch insulation all the way around. We do have more in the ceilings um, or the ceiling and also the floor, uh, but our walls all the way around wrapped uh, throughout the entire space is two inches of rigid insulation on the interior of the space. So, you know, this is very key as we, you know, kind of process details to ensure that there is a true thermal break uh, between all of the studs and then the interior of the unit. You know, and this allows for a very comfortable, you know, if you touch the wall, it's going to feel warm, you know, conditioned or cool, depending on which environment you're in. So this is a kind of a very sensitive awareness as to the, you know, the realities of how air moves through a space in both hot and cool environments, how we create a space that can go into, you know, very hot, very cool environments, you know, all while maintaining a very comfortable uh, and, you know, honest interior um, kind of reality of how the space feels. So I think this will kind of wrap us up and bring us back to uh, the, the technology bay I can talk a little bit more about uh, before we move on to the bedroom. So now we're back in the hallway of the LV and we're gonna talk a little bit more about what's included in this technology bay up at the top side of this hidden storage closet. 
Um, you know, we have all the access to every component, com you know, as uh, the, the system, you know, heating, cooling, all this stuff. You know, whether you're monitoring your tanks, you know, this is all located and consolidated at this one location. Now, a lot of this stuff can be uh, accessed and viewed remotely. You know, for example, the, uh, the energy system has a proprietary app that you know, can be downloaded on your phone and you can view kind of real time how much energy you're using, where it's flowing, you know, very much like an electric vehicle where you see real time where the energy is coming from and what power source you're using. It's very similar to that. Um, so that's, you know, that's standard. We have you know, tank, kind of these high-end tank monitoring systems up, located up here. You know, where you're able to monitor you know, your fresh, your gray, your black water tank capacities. You, know, you also have uh, propane tank monitoring up here so you know exactly how much uh, kind of usable you know, resources you're carrying around with you. Um, there's one other uh, aspect of that. Um, we've really increased the quality of the tank monitoring systems in this unit. Um, you know, previously you had limited access to how much, you know, kind of data, but, you know, through this unit we find data is power. And by utilizing that data and making, you know, empowered decisions based on that, you're able to make these, you know, great um, choices in how you stay and travel, you know, whether it's on grid or off grid. Um, there's a couple uh, great option packages that are available here uh, that you can add on. Uh, one is the mobile connectivity package. Uh, that will increase your Wi-Fi connectivity through LTE connection and, you know, being able to uh, kind of capture signal, whether it's through cell phone boosting capability or uh, LTE and Wi-Fi uh, capturing remotely through the use of antennas. Uh, so you can always have a dedicated and private network um, on, on board your LV. Uh, we also have a great remote security package uh, where you can put in some cameras on all four sides of the unit and have this real 360 degree view of what's happening at any given time outside your unit and that is also app controlled so you know we're able to view that uh, from your your device uh, wherever you are as long as your unit does have access to wi-fi you can see all those things wherever you are you know virtually anywhere in the world uh, so you know that kind of wraps up just a frankly it's just a scratch on, uh, on the, everything that we've located up here and the, the pure technology of this unit. Um, you know, there's a lot more detail that we can go into, um, but you know, this is a, a great introduction as to the many wonderful systems that we have in the LV. Thanks, Matt, for that summary on some of our tech and energy systems. Um, moving into the last room, uh, almost done, we're here in our bedroom. Great. So right now we're coming from the hallway. This is uh, you know, what you see here in this floor plan just right at the entry space. This is kind of the convergence of all the different spaces in the LV. Uh, you've got your entry door you know, just right down below here, the bathroom door straight ahead, uh, kitchen and dining and living to the left, and this door here, uh, which you barely see right here. We're going to take a step inside the bedroom and take a look around. So we're moving right into the bedroom space. Now you can see this is the door that we just walked through and now we are sitting kind of floating right directly in the center of the room so we can navigate all around and take a look at all the functional features of this beautiful space. Now what you see is a uh, right below us is a queen bed. Uh, one of the great aspects about this design is you do have the ability to walk all the way around the bed to both sides. Uh, to either side of this bed you have a dedicated nightstand uh, both to the left and to the right. You have an outlet with USB plugs directly above it. So this is a very enjoyable sleeping experience. You know, you do have uh, a couple windows in here, uh, probably our feature window, uh, which is going to be larger than what you see here on this, uh, this image. Uh, this is our what, star view skylight, uh, where you're able to you know, as you're falling asleep. Sometimes squirrel view. <laughs> squirrel view skylight. Um, it's just, it's amazing to experience this, you know, to be sleeping here, both, um, you know, both Joanna and myself, this is the best ambient, the best sleep aid you could possibly, you know, have. It's, you know, watching, I've never seen more shooting stars, frankly, than, you know, traveling in the LV, you know, in a conditioned, wonderful, beautiful space, you know, feeling comfortable and just having that viewscape as you're falling asleep really does put the mind at ease. You know, I can't explain enough how, how wonderful that experience is. Sighting of shooting stars, not promised with purchase <laughs> of LV. <laughs> not promised, but you know, it's Highly likely. when it happens, it's, it's just amazing. 
Um, there is, uh, you know, stuff you don't see uh, in this space is that this bedroom is fully insulated. So, you know, we, we take, uh, you know, kind of a direct focus to make sure that we don't have, you know, any, any sound from the neighboring bathroom. Uh, all of the, the walls, you know, inside here, this is two inch insulation all the way around. Uh, so we do have, you know, a very nice sleeping experience. You know, as you're sleeping, all these windows do have blackout shades. So you see this nice kind of black aluminum framed roller. Uh, you just pull this down, that blacks this out. We also do have some, you know, shade elements in the skylight above here as well. Um, and you'll see kind of looking through here, um, we also have, you know, many of those walnut details, um, you know, throughout this unit and in the bedroom. And it really adds just a nice touch um, you know, something that we got a lot of requests for, just warming up the space a little bit. And the biggest kind of aspect of Walnut, you've got two on both sides, right? You've got the entrance door, uh, which, you know, is Walnut on both sides. And then you do have this beautiful full length mirror. So when the door is closed, you can stand right in front of it, you know, and, you know, while you're changing, getting ready for the day. But on this other side, this is now a new LV feature design, is this giant four foot closet door. So what you see behind here is a full height, full width closet with a shelf. Um, it is hanging plenty residential style for, uh, you know, for accommodates space for two. Uh, speaking of storage, you do have this, uh, this dresser. So, you know, this right now is shown with an optional upgrade as part of the good housekeeping package where we install a washer dryer combo here, uh, conveniently located in the bedroom right next to where you store all your clothes. Uh, you have a sh uh, kind of a countertop directly above for storing laundry baskets or any kind of articles or even folding laundry. Uh, in lieu of the, uh, the good housekeeping package, this does become a side-by-side -side three drawer dresser, uh, whether that's for two individuals or for one. Uh, so storage space is not only adequate, it's, it, it, I'm not gonna say excessive, but it is significant. Uh, it's great to see how much storage we've been able to put in here. So moving on, there's something that we see here. Uh, we do have some lights. These are kind of your night lights, your side lights to either side of the bed, directly over the nightstands. You know, these are a very nice warm lighting quality uh, so you can utilize as you're going to bed. You'll notice also we have overhead lighting and it's even represented quite well here where that light quality is a, a very nice warm LED fixture. So, you know, we don't want to, you know, we're obsessive about light, uh, both natural and, um, you know, artificial. So the LED lights are very low power draw and it's a very nice experience. By the way, every single light is on dimmers. So that kind of increases the configurability uh, of that unit. And, you know, I can say that each light in this unit is between 3000 to 3500. Uh, on the Kelvin scale for those who are focused on light quality uh, and you'll see that we do have that dimmer right here as you enter the room. So we can talk a little bit about storage, you know, the other aspects of storage we do have in this unit. Uh, we talked about the, uh, the nightstands, we also talked about the storage and the dressers. Now the storage that you do not see is directly beneath us, our floating camera here. We do have the entire bed is able to be lifted up and you have a very large 60 by 80 inch storage compartment directly beneath you. So whether you have larger goods like bins or surfboards, you can install you know, safes and other uh, items down underneath there. It's just a very nice space to put a lot of things that are accessed from the inside. Side. Yeah, and this storage is you know, very easily accessible. It's on gas struts. It's not something where you have to, you know, hold up the bed with one hand, balance it on your head while you're trying to reach and access something. Um, we've had that experience before, and you know, it's it's not um, it's not a good experience. So we've really you know thought through kind of all those details and whether you're accessing it on a daily basis or having more seasonal items. Um, you know, it's a really really great option for. Um, that extra storage that you might be uh, needing for everything you're carrying around. And now that we're in the bedroom, this, this really does have a, a good representation of all the different materials that we use. And I can talk briefly about, you know, one of the sustainable aspects of our you know, focus is the, um, the indoor air quality and what design decisions are used to affect that. Um, you know, if uh, you've probably heard the term VOCs, which are, means volatile organic compounds, uh, this is really just the off-gassing of new materials and how that affects the indoor air quality of the space. 
Do we want VOCs? VOC is bad. So, you know, we really focus we don't on... We want them. <laughs> we do not. We don't want VOCs. Um, you know, VOCs can contribute to negative health effects, um, you know, allergies, you know, over the long, long term, you know, of, uh, you know, off gassing of new products. Um, it can it can contribute negatively to your health. So, you know, we embrace both low and no VOC um, standards in our design. Um, you know, two of the partners uh, in the company are lead accredited professionals, which is, uh, you know, a, a standard for designing sustainable architecture. Now, while lead doesn't apply to um, mobile structures, you know, the concepts and standards do still apply as we design this. So, you know, some of the major aspects here um, when we think about low and no VOC design uh, is, you know, use of natural materials and understanding truly what off-gassing means. Um, we do use, you know, primarily as our, you know, everything you see that's white. Uh, first off, this is a heat-treated paint enamel aluminum. Uh, so this is aluminum sheet, um, which has already been, you know, the, the paint material uh, is very durable and it's been baked on through a heated process. So the uh, VOCs have already been released and there are, there's nothing left to, uh, to be released. And this is true for all of our, I mean, ceilings, walls, yep. cabinetry. Everything you see. So, you know, whereas opposed, you know, laminates on the, the contrary, you know, that uses a lot of glues and solvents and then, you know, formaldehy formaldehyde based products to assemble and, you know, hold those products together. You know, whereas, you know, other products which are either more natural or by virtue of how they're built and manufactured, the off-gassing has already occurred. So that's not going to occur in the first you know, year or two of your use. So you know, other aspects that we want to point out is you know, things like you know, the wood that we use and the, the, the way that we treat the wood. So you know, our wood um, you know, products, they don't contain any, um, any clear coat, anything of that nature. They're left you know, in a natural finish and coated with a, um, a natural oil. You know, so as not to add any additional uh, unnecessary solvents in, in the design. Um, you know, also the big one here is I'm going to come over to the cabinetry. You'll notice the cabinetry is also built out of the same white stuff as the walls. You know, so that's that's aluminum. You know, our cabinets not only you know are we getting away from kind of this solid core MDF or OSB you know underlayment. I guess you don't put OSB in cabinets, but you know everything's aluminum. Everything's metal. You know, designed to last for a very long time. Uh, and also designed so that we're not off-gassing, you know, constantly throughout the product. Um, now, there's so many more aspects of kind of this indoor air quality and VOC sensitive design that we can go into. I uh, just wanted to touch on it briefly and kind of note how very important that is to us. Uh, you know, as part of this, there are option packages that can increase the indoor air quality even further. Uh, we have an air and water quality package for environmental sensitivity. Um, you know, this can, you know, take that indoor air and kind of filter, uh, you know, and also give you monitoring so you know the quality of the air that you're experiencing and have that data for, for your kind of review so you can make positive decisions. You know, the other one with the air and water quality is water, you know. So as, you know, we recognize you're traveling around, you have various sources of water, whether it's through, you know, a, a hose or, you know, that's at a campground or somewhere that you might not be as familiar with. Uh, you know, you really want to embrace this concept of making sure that the water is as clean as it possibly can be. Um, so we do have some great water filtration packages available. Germaphobes unite! <laughs> Perfect. Uh, one other uh, thing that we can talk about are some of the great options available in this space is we do have a dedicated theater option with a, you know, with a 70 inch projection screen. Um, that drops down right here. So basically what you're doing is you're laying in the bed, uh, we've got a couple of the images of uh, Joanna and myself sitting inside this room enjoying uh, an, a vintage movie. This does become your silver screen. So you pull this down, the projector is located behind you. This becomes a very high quality surround sound media rich theater uh, wherever you are. Um, we also have some audio kind of upgrades where you can install some more speakers in the ceiling, uh, a great high end subwoofer inside the space you know, to kind of round out that audio experience. Uh, we also have, we talked about the option for the washer dryer, uh, the good housekeeping package, which can, uh, which can give you some you know, further uh, kind of you know, convenience in terms of saving time. 
Uh, there's one other option which we haven't released a lot of information about. It's been in development for a while and we're just about to make it public. Uh, we do have an option, I'm proud to say, uh, where we can get rid of the bed and nightstands altogether and we can put in a fold down bed which exists right up against the wall here and that is a convertible bed that is also a desk and I'm extremely excited to share this with you. Uh, so we're, we've, we've listened to uh, kind of folks that are you know, considering purchasing and we are going to have an option to put in a, uh, a more adaptable uh, space inside this bedroom. So if you don't want this large dedicated bed, uh, you can take these other options which you know, create more floor space, you can make it more of a playroom or an office space, and you can have some more mixed use kind of capacity and functional realities here inside that space. Yeah, this really has been a major request and you know, you've heard us throughout this video mention various option packages. You know, we've created over 20 of them um, you know, so that you can choose how to customize your unit based on how you're using it because the range of use and you know, the type of travelers really is you know, quite extensive. We've got solo travelers, couples, families, you know, people with kids, pets, um, you know, people working on the road full time and needing that office space um, you know, while the kids play in the other room. So, you know, with this one model and one floor plan, we are able to offer so much, you know, different adaptability and functionality um, through these packages. And this brings us to the conclusion of our tour. And, you know, we've kind of done a deep dive into this. We, you know, really started talking a lot about the details you see here, some of the reasons why we did what we did. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm excited to share more. I'm excited to you know, really go into detail of all these spaces, but this was intended as kind of a, an overview to really give you a, an intro into what this means and how you would use the space. Now you're thinking, it's over already? <laughs> um, there will be many more videos to come, but yep, just a great introduction. And um, you know, keep your questions coming, um, you know, requests for packages. We're constantly developing things behind the scenes and I'm um, just excited to continue to share with you um, all the exciting things we're working on for 2020. And I thought what better uh, kind of a view uh, than to end on this image right here. Um, you know, this speaks a lot to how I start every one of my days. You know, when Joanne and I wake up you know, in this bed, uh, in this bedroom, you know, it's often that we get to experience views just like this. Um, and you know, through all the sensitive design and considerations, you know, we hope that we have been able to at least share a glimmer of the thought that has gone into this and all the reason behind all these designs you know, that really contribute to the benefit and usability of what living vehicle means to us. And uh, you know, we remain excited. Thanks for following along and uh, keep watching all these videos that are about to come out. And uh, we're just grateful for everyone out there that, that cares and um, keep, stay tuned. Yeah, make sure to hit that subscribe button um, on the YouTube channel so you'll be notified as soon as new videos are released. And you can learn more at www.livingvehicle.com. And make sure to check out our brochure. We go into great detail um, about all of our options. And like Matt said earlier, um, this tour is available for you right on our website. So if you'd like to play around with it on your own um, and look a little bit closer at some of the areas we talked about, um, that's on our website ready for you to go. So thanks for watching. If you made it all the way through, give yourself a round of applause and uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks guys.